For a while now, fans of Kang and Omega had been feeling quite a bit of disappointment, as many of the characters who'd been hyped up as being very strong ended up being kind of underwhelming. Carlos got mid-diffed by Gao Lang, Monkey Man got turned into a cereal bowl, Alan Wu got ripped open like a bag of chips, Jirota was sacrificed on the altar of showing how powerful bad compatibility is, Faye actually lived up to the hype, but didn't live for much longer after that, and Lolong, well, the guy may as well have never existed at this point. So naturally, when it came to Edward Wu, a character who had been hyped up for quite some time, a lot of us were holding our breaths and expected to be disappointed yet again. That has not happened, because Edward Wu may have single-handedly saved the hype for Kang and Omega. Now before I talk a little bit more in depth about everyone's new favorite Kangen character, I of course have to mention if you haven't already, definitely be sure to hit that subscribe button and help us reach our new goal of hitting 5,000 subscribers. Whenever we do that, I'm going to do a 24-hour live stream. That should be a lot of fun and chaotic. So if you're interested in that, definitely be sure to subscribe. Also, I have a Patreon if you're interested in helping to support me and the channel directly. Also want to get access to some extra content, you should definitely check that out. And I have a Discord if you're interested in talking to me or other people about the series I cover on the channel. There's a link to that in the description as well. Now then, let's get in to Edward Wu. Edward, or as we all like to call him, Eddie, was introduced at the end of Kengan Ashra as part of the evil trio that was seemingly going to be the new main antagonists in Kangan Omega. That did not end up being entirely true. Gia's been more of, frankly, kind of a slapstick comedy character who just kind of gets dragged by the hair and bullied by top-tier characters. Faye was more so there for the purpose of... I guess, establishing that no, actually, Oma is the Tiger's Vessel, Oma is the greatest user of the Nico style, or, you know, he will be. He will be the inheritor of Tiger Nico's true Nico style, um, and I guess didn't serve much of a purpose beyond that, because he died after his first fight. Um, but Eddie, Eddie has been, uh, making quite the name for himself. Um, after the Alan Wu incident, which I have an entire video where I seethe for like 10 minutes about how fucking awful that quote-unquote fight was, it was clear to some people that no, 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 no. Ac actually, Alan just exists to set up Ryan's fight with Edward. So that's not the main event. That's just kind of the prelude to the actual event of Ryan fighting Edward. And so I was like, ah, fine, okay, all right, whatever. The Allen thing is still terrible. It's still like by far the worst thing in the tournament. However, if we get really good stuff out of Eddie and he doesn't job, then it's fine, it's okay. It's, no, it's not fine, but I'll put it to the side. I, I won't focus on it. I'll, I'll put it at the back of my mind. And we'll, we'll just focus on Eddie. And then we didn't show uh, pretty much anything happening with Edward for like, oh god, I don't know, six? No, not six months. No, yeah, it was like six months. We went forever without getting any kind of update on what was going on with Eddie and Ryan. Um, and then finally... Once we get into Faye versus Waka, Ryan shows up behind Eddie. Um, and then we don't see anything from that from that point onward until after the last fight of the tournament. And we were like, oh, fuck, is it going to be off screen? Because that was the big worry. That was the big worry is that the whole fight was going to be off screen. If that were the case, I would prefer Eddie to win. If Eddie got off screened. I would drop the series. Well, like, let's be real here. I would drop the series. Many people would drop the series if Eddie got off-screened by Ryan. That would be some bullshit. Um, but no. Last round ends. We get, like, a buffer chapter talking about the Kangen politics no one really cares about. Um, and then we finally get to it. And it turns out, actually, Ryan has been off-screened. Initially, we're like, hmm, oh, shit. 
I was kind of worried that that was going to be it, that we weren't really going to get much after that. But you see, Ryan, as we all know, is like top five Kengen fighters, very powerful. Um, there's an argument that if he weren't such a moron and actually made full use of his techniques in addition to his absurd physical strength, he would possibly have won the Annihilation Tournament. Um, so the fact that he got low diffed by someone is kind of absurd. Um, and it's very clear, Ryan tried to fight Eddie 1v1 face to face, both of their base forms, Eddie low diffed him in base. So that's already kind of nuts. Now, Fabio and Solomon show up and they start tag teaming Ryan and I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, we're not gonna get real legitimate feats from Eddie. We're, we're not gonna get a legitimate victory from him. And then Ario shows up. They take out Fabio. Then Wu Jing shows up. Turns into a 3v2 and I'm like, okay, okay, all right. All right, I see. And then Eddie starts doing work. And holy fucking shit does Eddie do work. Oh my god. Um... He's soloing Aerio and Wu Jing, who are both heads of their respective clans. Casually. Casually. With his bare fucking hands, he's breaking weapons and stuff. He's smacking these two guys around like it's absolutely nothing. And then comes the time where finally, finally, Eddie goes into his Gui Hun. Which I had, I had worried for some time. I'm like, this is going to be where Eddie becomes not as cool anymore. Because Goy Hun for the Westwood Faction members made them bulk out for some reason relating to their physiology. Um, and it, it was dumb. I thought the whole hulking out thing was kind of stupid. It made the characters look worse. Um, but no, Eddie doesn't hulk out. Because, I mean, he's, he's already gigantic. He's already puffy as hell. If he buffed up anymore, he, he would become like a giant sphere. Um, that's not what happens. Instead, his Guihun looks more like Divine Demon. I'm wondering what the exact cause of that. We're going to get into a, a little bit of theorizing very shortly. Um, but then he proceeds to perform one of, if not the most impressive feats of literally any character in the mainline Kengen series. Like, outside of Fist of the Seeker or something... By far the most impressive feat of any character, in which he moves so quickly that Ario and Ryan are not able to see him, punches Ario in the stomach, sends Ario flying, and then in the time it takes for Ario to land on the ground after hitting him, he then speed blitzes Ryan and then speed blitzes Wu Jing, who's on like the other end of the room from them, takes out both of them, and the amount of time it took for Ario to fall to the ground. And it should also be of note that, like, Eddie had to turn around initially to then go after Ario, because he was facing Ryan, then turned around again to go after Ryan. So the, the dude did, like, two whole 180 turns, took out two very strong characters, one S-plus character, in, like, under a second. Absolutely fucking absurd. Oh yeah, and of course, all three of those guys were in 100% removal. We've seen how strong 100% removal Ryan is, okay? He no-diffed him. Now, now you could say going into Goi Hun means that you're not, like, low-diffing someone, which, you know, I, I would hear out the argument. But, like, to go into a transformation and then proceed to low-diff a top five character who's going 100% is absolutely fucking ridiculous. Like, that's so fucking absurd. Eddie breaks the power scaling. Eddie's top of the verse for the first time in a while. Well, no. Faye, Faye lived up to the hype. Faye lived up to the hype of what we expected from the Tiger's Vessel, but he died. So you could argue that kind of dampens the hype a little bit. Now, Maybe, I don't know, maybe Eddie dies in tomorrow's chapter. If he does, I'm going to go spend the rest of my days in a cave somewhere. Um, but thus far, Eddie is not only living up to the hype, he's surpassing the hype. There has not really been an instance where a character in a span of like three or four pages establishes himself as like a top of the verse character. He's top tier. 
like actual top tier, not a top tier Kengen fighter like people in the Kengen Association or in Purgatory, straight up top of the verse character, up there with some of the Fist of the Secret characters who are basically fucking Baki characters in Kengen. Um, it's nuts. It's great. Because now, listen, everybody loves Eddie now because he's lived up to the hype. It's that easy, Sandrovich. If you're going to hype up a character, have them do absurdly hype shit. Like, this is just obscene how over-the-top powerful Eddie is. And it's great. We love it because that's what we wanted from Eddie. That's what we were hyped up to expect from Eddie. And it's great. It's fantastic. I'm hoping that... Something doesn't happen to dampen this in the next chapter or two. Um, I imagine Eddie's probably going to survive this encounter. Um, and I'm thinking that he is probably going to be sort of the end game goal for Ryan, much like how Nico is the end game goal for Oma. I would also say that I'm fairly confident Eddie is likely on par with Tiger Nico, just as powerful, if not slightly more, slightly less. If it was one of those two, I'd assume he's probably slightly less powerful than him. Um, so he's also now setting the bar for like the, the end game villains. We thought the big villains in Kang and Omega initially were going to be Eddie, Gia G, and Faye. No, it turns out it's Eddie, Tiger Nico, and Jan, who may or may not end up being powerful. I don't know what to expect from Jan. Um, but Eddie. <sighs> oh, we're, we all pray to the church of Edward Wu now. So anyway, why why is Eddie so powerful? I feel like that's kind of a kind of a question we have. Why is the guy so fucking strong? Um, I have a theory. And it kind of leans into why is Eddie so like impossibly buff already and why does his Goihun look different? Now there is the possibility that his Goihun looks different because he's actually using like Nico style stuff, but I feel like if he was they would say it's Nico style stuff. So it's just Goihun. Now the thing about Goihun and removal is that the ability to do them is for the most part, based in genetics, what is kind of your physiological makeup that determines your removal and goihun output. Um, so one would assume any kind of differences in someone's goihun or removal would be based on their genes. And in Eddie's case, he seems to be abnormally strong and durable already without using goihun. So I think the case for Edward is that he actually has a case of Superman syndrome, just like Wakatsuki. It explains why he's so big, why he's so durable, and why his Goihun looks so different from the other Westward faction members. And frankly, if you want to think about it, Waka is already insanely strong and insanely durable. Imagine if he had something like removal or Goihun. When you imagine the kind of amps that characters like Ryan get from removal, you could kind of see Waka ending up around that ballpark. So it would kind of make sense for that being why Edward is as powerful as he is. Also, a fun fact, uh, in the drafts for the chapter that we just got last week where we got Eddie's Goy Hun reveal, um, he didn't actually block Ryan's lion bite. He just ate it. He just took it and it did nothing to him. Uh, so that means he actually got nerfed from the drafts, which... <sighs> The fact that Eddie is as powerful and as impressive as he is now, and that's him nerfed from the drafts, is just mind-boggling. It, it, it fucking boggles the mind to think about that. Uh, and it just goes to show how much Eddie has lived up to the hype. Edward Wu's presence in the story now, just dog-walking established characters, goes to show how you live up to the hype. That's how you fulfill the expectations you set for various characters. Not by having them lose their first fight to actually show off how strong other characters are. No, 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 no. You have them beat the ever-loving Christ out of those pre-existing characters to establish them as a threat and as something that your already established characters will be striving to overcome later on. And so far, Eddie is fulfilling that role wonderfully. I hope he's sticking around for a very long time after this, because in addition to being very strong and cool, Eddie is just a very entertaining character. You gotta love the shit-eating grin. The man's lit up three cigars over the span of this fight. He monologues about his favorite type of steak. How could you not love the guy? He's an absolute blast to have around. 
and I hope he's sticking around for a very, very long time, and I hope his performance thus far is a sign of good things to come for Kengen Omega. I hope this is a sign that even outside of Eddie, the hype, the hype is back, and it's back in spades. Well, with that, that's all I've got to say for today's video. If you enjoyed, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and click that notification bell so you don't miss any of my uploads. I do Kangen Omega chapter reactions and re reviews every week that we get a new chapter. Of course, since tomorrow's Wednesday as of recording this, there will be a reaction out tomorrow. I think I'm going to talk about the chapter on stream, and there will probably be a review tomorrow as well. If you enjoy discussing Kangen Omega with other people, or you just enjoy the content I produce on this channel, I highly suggest you check out my Discord server. I have a link to that down in the description. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys around. Take care.